Hi, I'm Cam Wyland. The debate between the worthiness of the 25 cent word versus the $100 word is ongoing. Some of us argue that simplicity is always best, if only because we can't risk confusing our readers with unfamiliar vocabulary. Others among us want to embrace the full scope of the English vocabulary and use the impressive and specific big words. This is an argument that rages from the ranks of the newbies to the halls of the masters. Contemporary Pulitzer winners, William Faulkner and Ernest Hemingway, had an infamous exchange in which Faulkner said that Hemingway could never be accused of using a word that might send a reader to the dictionary. To which Hemingway shot back, poor Faulkner, does he really think that big emotions come from big words? In general, I am a huge vocabulary nut. I love the big words, the unusual words, the arcane words. I love the discovery of a word that perfectly describes something that might otherwise have required half a dozen smaller words. I love it when I see another author use that word correctly, and I love it when I get the opportunity to use that word myself. But restraint is always the order of the day. An author's choice of words should always be guided by the requirements of his story. George Orwell's commandment to never use a long word where a short one will do is good advice. Even better, however, is the common sense stricture to never use a word that your narrators wouldn't use. You don't want your hillbilly characters talking like college graduates. I recently read a book that featured poor backwoods characters who remarkably managed to cram words such as irrefutable, cosmaligned, obliterated, effaced, carborundrum, progenitorless, and apotheosis all into one paragraph. So by all means, don't let the big words die, but also don't kill them through misuse. Thank you.